Secure Application Deployments from GitLab to Google App Engine. My name is Sri Rangan and I'm an Enterprise Solutions Architect with GitLab. The video contains the following sections. We start with a minimalist application. We configure it for the Google App Engine platform. We set up a basic GitLab pipeline and then we look at setting up a deployment job in the GitLab pipeline. We talk about securing the application development and the pipeline. And finally, we look at credentials management. Minimalist application. Let me draw your attention to this project over here. This is a minimalist Node.js application. We know it's a Node.js application because it contains the package.json file, which confirms it's an NPM project. And if you look at the index.js file, you will see a rudimentary HTTP server. I'm including the HTTP module. I am initializing the server such that it, it responds to every request with a single text message. This server then listens over host and port that has been set up in lines three and four. That's all there is to this app, very basic application. Just to note, the concepts shown in this video are being demoed with Node.js, but they work with Java, Ruby, C Sharp, Python, Go, and PHP. Google App Engine also supports the ability to bring your own runtime. So in theory, you can run this with any language or framework. Let's configure Google App Engine for our project. The only change you have to make in the code is you have to create a file called app.yaml and it contains a single line of code. Just indicate that the runtime I need Google App Engine to provide is Node.js 14. That's all that needs to be done at the code level. Let's just go a step further and look at what needs to be done in the Google Cloud Console. Log into your Google Cloud Console and create an App Engine project. I just created mine with the defaults and you can see it has generated a project ID for me called amiablewent 311910. That's all, let's go forward. The next step is to set up a GitLab pipeline. In GitLab, pipelines are set up as YAML files, specifically called the .gitlabci YAML file. In this pipeline, you can see I've defined the base container image for all my jobs to execute in. I've defined the stages in which they should be executed. I've got some mock build and test jobs out here. And I'm including some security scanners that GitLab offers out of the box. These security scanners will help me secure this project, which we will look into later. Finally, there is an app engine deployment job which has the configuration set up for deploying to App Engine. Pipeline definitions in GitLab are written as code, which means they can be templatized and individual jobs are composable, which means you can create once and use often. The end result should be a pipeline that looks something like this. Let's take a deeper look into the deployment job which actually deploys this application into the Google App Engine. If you look at the source code, you I bring your attention to the last three lines over here. What the first line is doing, it's taking a service account key file from the environment variable, and it's writing it down to a JSON file. Then it's invoking the gcloud CLI and authenticating it and authorizing it with that service account. And once it has been authorized, I'm just running a simple gcloud deploy command for this project. It's as simple as that. And let me show you a live example. Let's go to the pipelines. Let's look at one of the recent pipelines executed for the main branch. You can see that I have my jobs out here in the three stages as defined, build, test, deploy. And if you go into the deploy job, it contains the information that confirms that a deployment has gone through. Another thing you might have noticed is that I've created an environment in my job definition. 
and that lets me view the environment over here and I can actually click this link and you see the running instance of the application. Final or the penultimate section is secure application deployment. We saw in our pipeline definition that certain GitLab scanners were being included. Let me just refresh your memory. That was referring to the file GitLab CI YAML and the actual including of these jobs, which are scanners that GitLab offers you. The scanners that were being included were SAST for secure application, security testing, static testing of your application. Then was secret detection for figuring out whether your application contains secrets or not. And finally, dependency scanning. There was probably a fourth scanner as well. That's right. There was a container scanning that was being included as well. Let me bring your attention to how these scanners execute. This is an example of an insecure application where I've made some code changes and the code changes introduce vulnerabilities. So just to walk you through the code changes, I my Docker file base image has been moved to an insecure version of Node.js. Then if you look at app.js file, I add some passwords into my source code in plain text. And I perform some execution of child processes based on arguments received from the request. This introduces runtime, runtime vulnerabilities. Finally, if you look at package.json, it introduces vulnerabilities in terms of uh, including libraries with versions that have insecurities in them. And this is my merge request view. So I am the author. I have executed uh, these code changes and I've performed a git push. When I perform a git push, a pipeline gets executed. And you can see in the test stage, GitLab has automatically included a lot of scanners that make sure um, that the code that has been modified gets scanned. Um, the result of the scanner is available in the merge request overview. If you look at these sections out here, there's a widget at the bottom that says security scanning detected 16 potential vulnerabilities, four critical, four high, and eight others. If you have a look, you will see per individual scanner, it has found certain vulnerabilities. Clicking on the vulnerability takes you to the specific file and line number and potentially offers you a solution on how to fix them. As a developer, it's now my responsibility to get, get, let's say, get acting on the feedback I've received. I've received feedback, I've received these reports, now I must fix them. So I speak to my colleagues, I speak to my experienced uh, security engineers, and I work with them and I fix this. The next time I do a git push here, the scanners will execute again, and if the vulnerability has been fixed, it'll be checked off. There is potentially a chance that I decide that a vulnerability is a false positive, in which case I can dismiss it, or I can decide that I will fix it at a future date or time. In this case, I can create an issue for this. If I choose to perform some actions of this nature, as per the merge request approval rules, the security team will be automatically involved because I'm either dismissing a vulnerability or I'm deciding it to fix later and they have to give me an approval for doing so. Apart from my security team, I have different stakeholders for which my merge requests need to be approved by as well. So this could be my backend developers, my frontend developers, my business stakeholders and so on. So you can set these up as you like. This way we make sure we have a secure pipeline and a secure application because every change goes through all these scanners. And uh, we make sure that long-lived branches, stable branches, the main branch is protected. These vulnerabilities do not make it into the main branch. From the security team's point of view, there are organization-wide security dashboards which let you view a lot of reports for a lot of projects in a concise manner. And 
the main action you're supposed to do as a security officer there is identify vulnerable projects or high risk projects and try to spend some more time and effort over there. Finally, we looked at compliance workflows. So changes can only be merged into stable branches if pipelines and scanners execute successfully and the human approval criteria have been met. So you can set up the rules as you like and make sure all the necessary approvals are in place before you can merge. The security team gets automatically involved if new vulnerabilities are being introduced as part of this merge request. And of course, you have got compliance dashboards and audit logs to have a complete overview of what's going on in the organization. Finally, uh, the last topic for today is credentials management. We'll look at how credentials were set up for this demo and we'll try to explore whether there are better ways of doing it. So before I uh, start this, let me remind you what's going on over here again in my deploy job. The GitLab runner, which is executing this deploy job, is receiving a service account variable from the environment and it's writing it down to a file which then is used for authentication. So how is this done? This is done, you go into your Google Cloud console, you select the project, the App Engine project, you go into Identity Access Management Service Accounts and you will see a service account for the App Engine default. So this is the default account that gets created when you create an app engine project the service account needs to be used so you click here you select it you go to your keys tab there and you can then add keys and download keys so this key gets downloaded and then the project id and the key is added to a ci cd variable in my gitlab project so if i go into my settings if i go into ci cd you will and expand variables you will see it out here and this is the one that is being made available to the GitLab runner. So it's made available to the GitLab runner, which is why this command then writes it to file. Okay, now the question is, is there a better way of doing this? And um, I would say probably uh, yes, because your organization might want to use a credentials manager just keep in mind these sort of keys should be rotated quite often and perhaps your organization is set up in a way that the persons modifying the source code in GitLab are not the same persons generating new keys so assuming that there is a separate team that generates keys and they need not necessarily work with the source code so they're using in this example HashiCorp vault they're putting their secrets out there and GitLab has good integration with this. The way this this would work is that the GitLab, C, uh, the GitLab instance would uh, trigger a pipeline and when it triggers the CI job it passes, it generates and passes a JSON web token to the runner. The GitLab runner then takes the JWT, talks to HashiCorp vault, the vault returns back a token, this is the authorization token, through which the runner can now go back to vault again and say, hey, listen, I want these secrets. And of course, you have the cloud operator who manages all the secrets and sets up vault in the first place. This is one way of doing things. The second way of doing things is to let, is to let GitLab be completely unaware of credentials at all. So GitLab is not even responsible when it comes to going to the credentials manager and fetching the secrets from there. So the way to achieve this is, let's assume you're using Google Cloud. For deployments to Google Cloud, set up a dedicated runner on Google Cloud. So your GitLab runner, which deploys to Google Cloud, runs on Google Cloud, right? This host machine, the host machine for the GitLab runner, is provided credentials via Google Cloud's native credentials management system. So it's a host machine running on Google Cloud and the native Google Cloud means of credentials management pass in the secrets to this machine. All deploy jobs in, pipeline, in, in the GitLab pipelines 
are configured to execute on this particular dedicated runner right and then the deploy job when it's running on this runner picks up the secret from Google Cloud's native mechanisms which means the GitLab instance and runner is not aware of secrets at all and um, the less systems that are aware of credentials the better so that's uh, that's the philosophy behind the the final option offered here quick summary applications are deployed from GitLab to Google Cloud to Google Cloud's app engine the whole dip deployment is automated and it can be reused across several projects because pipelines are created as code and they're reusable we integrate security into the application development process so when the developer makes a single change we run all the necessary scans and there are enough gatekeepers along the way to make sure vulnerable code does not make it to the production branch and there are various choices for you to manage your credentials with that summary i'll take a pace i'll take a break thank you